STAR stands for the State of Texas Assessments of Academic Readiness Program. So this is a test that's necessary for students to take every year and if I understand correctly you have to take it in high school in order to graduate. Uh, so today we're going to be looking at uh, the high school English 1, that's grades 9 through 12. We're going to be looking at the English 1 portion uh, of the exam and we're going to be looking at uh, writing. The uh, Texas Education Agency, TEA, they release previous tests and I think that these previous tests are probably your best bet in order to study and prepare for the exam. They have them for all the subjects including uh, including Spanish. So let me first walk you through how to get to the test at the website. I'll put a link in the description for the YouTube watchers for those on Instagram. Uh, you'll have to go to YouTube and find the video to do it or you can follow along with me here. So you go to tea.texas.gov and the main website will pop up, right? And you go over to student assessments and you go down to State of Texas Assessments of Academic Readiness. Click on that. And if you go over, you'll see Released Tests under Star Resources, Released Tests. Click on that. And if you scroll down, you see the tests from 2013 through 2022 for grades three through eight in mathematics and reading. And then for the high school level, they have Algebra 1, English 1, English 2, Biology, U.S. History. If you keep going down, you'll also see uh, Spanish for the same years. And for, for grades 3 through 5, it looks like. Okay. So we're going to be here today, 2013 writing. Now, there's the released questions, which we're going to be looking at, and then there's the answer key. And over here in the third column, this is the rationale. So this is the explanation of why the correct answer is the correct one. But they don't have that for 2013 writing. So hopefully this video will help give you some insight and help you to learn uh, to take your reading comprehension up a level, uh, to take your editing and your writing capacity up a level. So I recommend that you uh, open the test in a new tab so that you have the test itself open and that you also open the answer key in a new tab. So you have the answers open in a separate tab. Uh, if you really want to be, um, if you really want to have an easier time of it, download the test, which is the first tab you open, download the test as a PDF and then open it that way now I've downloaded the test as a PDF and I'm going to be working on that because that way I can put notes in the margin so that you guys can see uh, so that you guys can see what you should be focused on while you're taking the test and, I, and when you take the test you absolutely should be making notes in the margins. You absolutely should be writing down what it is you think is important, pulling out the important data and, and writing it down so that you can quickly and more easily refer back to that. That just helps get things clear in your mind and also saves you a little bit of time. And I'll, we'll be looking at an example of that later in uh, question number four. We're gonna do five questions today. We're gonna read this this uh, essay and then we're going to do five questions. All right, here we go. So this is an essay. Uh, always read the instructions. Read the selection and choose the best answer to each question. Then fill in the answer on your answer document. Leah feels that students are not offered enough time for lunch. She has written this paper to express her opinion and to convince others of the need for longer lunch breaks. Read Leah's paper and look for the revisions she should make. Then answer the questions that follow. Longer lunch, please.
The teachers and administrators at our school often say that they want students to be more focused and engaged in class. I have a suggestion that would address this concern. Shorten each class period by three minutes and add that time to the school lunch period. I am convinced that students, that students would do better in school if they had a midday break that allowed them enough time to eat a good meal and need to recharge their brains with physical activity. With the current high school schedule, most students have just 30 minutes for lunch. Because they have to travel to and from the cafeteria and stand in line, some students are left with just 10 minutes to scarf down their lunch. When students are rushed, they are more likely to make unhealthy choices. According to a 2008 study published in the Journal of School Health, diet quality is associated with academic performance. In other words, eating an unhealthy lunch could negatively affect how well a student does in school. Giving students more time to select and enjoy a healthy meal would therefore boost grades. Furthermore, learning is hard work. In order for the brain to be able to do all this work, the brain's cells must make certain connections. Research shows that exercise stimulates these connections, but many students have schedules that are too full to include exercise before or after school. A longer lunch break would allow students to take time to walk around the track or play some basketball in the gym. Students would surely be more ready to focus on afternoon studies if they were given the chance at lunch to get some much needed exercise. And maybe you can hear the sounds of students outside my window running around getting much needed exercise on their lunch break. Parents, teachers, and administrators expect a lot from students. Certain conditions must be met for students to live up to these expectations. An extra 20 minutes added to the lunch break would give students enough time to eat a nutritious meal and get some exercise. I believe that if students had this opportunity, they would be more motivated and alert in their afternoon classes and overall promotion would improve. Okay, so let's take a look at the questions. Okay, question number one. What is the most effective revision to make in sentence three? And let's just look at the answer since we have the answer key. So item one, oh, by the way, the answer key is a little bit uh, weird. Just meaning that there's the item number or the question number, and then there's the correct answer all the way over on the right, and in between there's all this other stuff that you don't need to look at and is confusing. Reporting category, readiness, or supporting content student expectation. You don't need all this stuff in the middle. You just need the item number and the correct answer. So the correct answer for this is B. So the question is, what is the most effective revision to make in sentence number three? Uh, can I get rid of this? Yeah. So when you take the test, you're going to be able to see both. You're going to be able to see both the test itself and on the page below if they laid it out conscientiously for you you're also going to be able to see the questions so what is the most effective revision to make in sentence three so let's go to sentence three and let's read the original I am convinced that students would do a better I am convinced that students would do better in school if they had a midday break that allowed them enough time to eat a good meal and need to recharge their brains with physical activity. Okay, you can hear right away that the placement of this word alone without a preposition is a little bit ambiguous, right? So. If they had a midday break that allowed them enough time to eat a good meal and need to recharge their brains with physical activity, instead of something like eat a good... Okay, so let's look at the options. I am convinced that students would do better in school if they had a midday break 
that allowed them enough time to eat a good meal and that allowed them enough time to recharge their brains with physical activity. So this is the same as the original sentence with the addition of that allowed them enough time to recharge their brains with physical activity. Now that's not bad. That would be pretty good. It's a lot of words though. Let's look at the next one. I'm convinced that students would do better in school if they had a midday break that allowed them enough time to eat a good meal and recharge their brains with physical activity. So they take out the words need to. And that does make it a lot more clear and this is the correct answer. Always read all the answers so let's keep going to see. I am convinced that students would do better in school if they had a midday break that allowed them to eat allowed them enough time to eat a good meal that recharged their brains with physical activity. So the reason this one is not correct is because of the word that. That implies that what is recharging their brains with physical activity is, is actually a good meal. So it's like saying the good meal recharges their brains with physical activity. So that grammatically doesn't even make sense. And then D, I am convinced that students would do better in school if they had a midday break that allowed them enough time to eat a good meal because they need to recharge their brains with physical activity. Also, that doesn't quite make sense. Um, they need to recharge their brains with physical activity. This clause here, or this phrase here, they need to recharge their brains with physical activity. And... Um, a midday break that allowed them enough time to eat. They are not quite matching up there. Uh, this one, the need to recharge their brains, is not a good because. Uh, let me read it to you again and maybe I can make it a little clearer. I am convinced that students would do better in school if they had a midday break that allowed them enough time to eat a good meal because they need to recharge their brains with physical activity. This sentence would be fine if we took with physical activity out. But as it stands now, you can't say that, that uh, they need to recharge their brains with physical activity. You can't say that uh, allowing them enough time to have a good meal is important because they need to recharge their brains with physical activity. This last clause or phrase or few words here, whatever it's called, uh, creates a little confusion in the sentence. So uh, let's read. Now what I recommend is that after you've chosen the one that you think is correct, that you read the sentences before and after it. So the question sent in the sentence in question is number three. So let's see how it sounds. I have a suggestion that would address this, this concern. Shorten each class period by three minutes and add that time to the school lunch period. I am convinced that students would do better in school if they had a midday break that allowed them enough time to eat a good meal and recharge their brains with physical activity. Yeah, makes good sense. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Uh, Leah wants to add the following idea to the second paragraph, sentences four through nine. Okay, here's the second paragraph, sentence four and sentence nine. Second paragraph. Some resort to the faster a la carte line to grab chips and a drink. Others skip lunch altogether. Reread the paragraph carefully. Then want you to read the whole paragraph. Where is the most effective place to add the sentence? After sentence six, after sentence seven, after sentence eight, or after sentence nine? So let's follow the instructions. Let's read the paragraph. And then let's go back and read sentence six and add the sentence that they want to add, sentence seven, and add the sentence they want to add, sentence eight, and add the sentence they want to add, and so on. With the current high school schedule, most students have just 30 minutes for lunch. Because they have to travel to and from the cafeteria and stand in line, some students are left with just 10 minutes to scarf down their lunch. When students are rushed, they are more likely to make unhealthy choices. According to a 2008 study published in the Journal of School Health, diet quality is associated with academic performance. In other words, eating an unhealthy lunch could negatively affect how well a student does in school. Giving students more time to select and enjoy a healthy meal would therefore boost grades. So I'm going to read sentence six and then add the following idea after sentence six and then do the same for sentence seven and so on. 
Uh, when students are rushed, they are more likely to make unhealthy choices. Some resort to the faster a la carte line to grab chips and a drink. Others skip lunch altogether. Yeah, those two sentences make sense together. Oh, we forgot to look at the, the, the answer. So always do that first when you're practicing. So question two, here you go, this is question two. And the answer to question two is F. So that's after sentence six. Uh, so that definitely makes sense. We just read that and it makes sense. Let's take a look at how that sounds, how this sentence sounds after seven, eight, and nine. According to a 2008 study published in the Journal of School Health, diet quality is associated with academic performance. Some resort to a faster a la carte line to grab chips and a drink. Yeah, okay. So the word some refers to students, right? And this word some should refer to students in the previous period. That means that the word students or or the subject that some is referring to should be in the previous sentence. That's not here in number seven. That's how you can tell. According to a 2008 study published in the Journal of School, School of Health, diet quality is associated with academic performance. Some students, parenthesis, resort to the faster a la carte line to grab chips and a drink, others skip lunch altogether. No. Sentence eight. In other words, eating an unhealthy lunch could negatively affect how well a student does in school. Now, student is here in this sentence, but let's see how it sounds. Some resort to the faster a la carte line to grab chips and a drink. No. There are two events. Eating an unhealthy, uh, negatively affecting how well a student does in school and the student entering the lunch line uh, in order to grab chips and a drink or skipping lunch those two do not go together chronologically. Listen to it again. In other words, eating an unhealthy lunch could negatively affect how well a student does in school. Some resort to the faster a la carte line to grab chips and a drink. Others skip lunch altogether. This idea that we're adding has to be closer to the event of the student going into lunch and making a choice. This sentence is after the student has already had lunch and then gone back to the classroom and and the lunch is affecting how well a student does in school, or the lack of exercise or lack of time affects how well a student does in school. Okay, then number nine, giving students more time to select and enjoy a healthy meal would therefore boost grades. Some resort to the faster a la carte line. Yeah, again, these are two events that are separated by a long period of time. So um, uh, we're talking about so again, so the reason these two don't go together is because this last sentence is a summary sentence or a conclusion sentence in the paragraph that restates, this is restating why it's important and the impact on grades. Whereas this sentence is very specific, it's referring to something very specific. That's a moment in time where the student enters the lunch line and makes the choice what to eat and drink. So these do not go together. And now let's read sentence six again. When, a student, when students are rushed, they are more likely to make unhealthy choices. So you have students, which is referred to by some, resort to the faster a la carte line, and then you have unhealthy choices, which goes with chips and a drink, or skipping lunch altogether. Hopefully you can see how those two go together. Students. Students goes with some unhealthy choices, goes with grab a chip, chips and a drink, or skip lunch. So when two sentences go together, when one sentence refers to the sentence right next to it, right before it usually, they're said to be cohesive. They, they are together. Something that's cohesive, when two things are cohesive, they stick together. They go together, right? This sentence supports and refers back to this sentence in a way that makes sense to the reader. I hope that's clear to you. This sentence here does not refer back to any of the other sentences in a way that makes sense. 
because they're separated either by what they're referring to, in other words, unhealthy choices or students, or because they're separated by too long of a period of time, or because in the case of this last sentence, this is just a summary or a conclusion sentence restating the idea of the paragraph, and it's not specific enough for this sentence. This sentence we're adding doesn't refer to the conclusion, sen conclusion sentence. I hope that's clear. Okay, number three. Leah wants to add some detail to the idea she expressed in sentence 10. Which of these sentences could best follow and support sentence 10? So let's take a look at that. So this is item number three. And the answer for that one is B. So the answer is going to be this one here. All right, let's go to sentence number 10. And let's read just sentence 10 and let's just read what's after it because it'll give us a little more context. Furthermore, learning is hard work. In order for the brain to be able to do all this work, the brain cells must make certain connections. So Leah wants to add some detail to the idea she expressed in sentence 10, that learning is hard work. Which of these sentences could, be, could best follow and support sentence 10? This word support means that you need to look at the main idea or the main data that's in the sentence. So the main data that's in here is that learning is hard work. And I want you to focus in. This is where you make notes in the margin. I want you to focus in on the words learning. Go over here with your pencil and you write learning and hard work. Okay? So that you're looking for those and these answers over here. Furthermore, learning is hard work. It can be exhausting and draining. Yeah, that, that goes with it. Pretty good. Let's see what the other answers are. They'll always read all the answers. Furthermore, learning is hard work. In the first three hours of the school day, a student might be asked to solve a linear equation, analyze a scene from a play by Shakespeare, and memorize the parts of a cell. Okay, so this is a lot more specific than the first one, and it goes with learning is hard work. It shows how much work students are being asked to do in the process of learning, in the process of the school day. What about C? Once I had to work on a set of math problems all afternoon, and by the end of the day, I was ready to take a long nap. Okay, this is anecdotal. It's one person's experience. Uh, learning is hard work for all students, not just one person. And it's also not, not quite in my view, um, not quite universal enough. Yet yeah, it has to apply to all students, not just to one person's experience. And D, some scientists, it's not, it's not bad, but it's not, it's not as good as B. Okay, and then D, some scientists believe that what we eat is related to our willingness and ability to work hard enough to achieve success. Yes, this is also not a bad choice, but not as good as B. The reason is because B refers to an amount of hard work, an amount of hard work. D refers to achieving success and that what we eat, what we eat affects our willingness to do hard work enough to achieve success. This sentence refers only to learning and to hard work. Let me, let me just reread everything, make sure I'm getting that right. Furthermore, learning is hard work. Some scientists believe that what we eat is related to our willingness and ability to work hard enough to achieve success. This is a little bit off topic. So this sentence brings in what we eat and it brings in a theory I don't want to say too much about this because I don't want to confuse you, but bringing up what we eat and achieving success, it's a little bit far away from learning and hard work. See this sentence B just describes what hard work looks like for a student. Uh, so I think this is the most direct answer, much more direct than D. Uh, it's not anecdotal applying to one person like C. It can be applied to all people. And unlike A, it provides 
quite a lot of information, quite a lot of data. So I think that's why B is the best choice. Okay, now number four. Leah would like to provide some strong evidence to support the ideas she's proposing in the third paragraph, sentences 10 through 14. Read the following quotations and analyze the information presented in each. Which quotation would be best to insert after sentence 13 to add credibility to the ideas in this paragraph? So we're looking at sentence 13. Just get rid of this. Uh, well, I'll get rid of it later. So we're looking at sentence 13. A longer lunch break would allow students time to take a walk around the track or play some basketball in the gym. Uh, let's look at which answer is correct. So this is question four. And the correct answer is F. This is the first one. According to Dr. John Ratey, a professor at Harvard Medical School, exercise provides an unparalleled stimulus, creating an environment in which the brain is ready, willing, and able to learn. Uh, let's read 13 and then read this one. A longer lunch break would allow students time to take a walk around the track or play some basketball in the gym. According to Dr. Reiti, a professor at Harvard Medical School, exercise provides an unparalleled stimulus, creating an environment in which the brain is ready, willing, and able to learn. Yeah, again, this goes to um, cohesion, right? So this sentence mentions... So this sentence mentions um, a longer break. Time to take a walk, right? It, it mentions a walk or exercise or basketball. Again, that's exercise, right? And this sentence here uh, mentions exercise specifically and the effects of exercise provides an unparalleled stimulus and the effect on the brain which creates an environment in which the brain is ready willing and able to learn it also brings up uh, an expert Dr. John Rady who's a professor at Harvard Medical School alright let's look at the others and I'm gonna read 13 and then read the other answers a longer lunch break would allow students time to take a walk around the track or play some basketball in the gym. Thomas Edison once said, the doctor of the future will give no medicine, but instead will interest his patients in the care of the human frame, in diet, and in the cause and prevention of disease. Now this sentence brings up uh, taking care of patients or people by showing them how to care for the human frame, using diet uh, in order to prevent disease. It does not mention a longer break for students at lunch. It doesn't mention exercise. So this is really out of context. We're talking about the effects of exercise on students and how a longer break would allow that to happen. So this is not cohesive. This is not this doesn't have unity with sentence 13. Okay, now number H. A longer lunch break would allow students time to take a walk around the track or play some basketball in the gym. In the preamble to its constitution, the World Health Organization states, health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. Again, it's, it's not cohesive enough. It doesn't refer to a longer break or to exercise. Uh, and then the last one. A longer lunch break would allow students time to take a walk around the track or play some basketball in the gym. Plato, a philosopher who lived more than 2,000 years ago, wrote, Lack of activity destroys the good condition of every human being, while movement and methodical physical exercise save it and preserve it. Now this one's pretty good, I think. Um, they're all actually not bad, but they're, again, again, this one, like the others, is not specific enough. It's not cohesive enough. It doesn't refer back to, or it doesn't refer to, uh, the longer break or the exercise in sentence 13. So that's why F is the most correct answer. Okay, and our last one today, 
Leah has not used the best choice of words in sentence 18. Let's go down to sentence 18. Right here. What changes should she make? Change opportunity to planning, change alert to conscious, change promotion to performance, change improve to develop. Let's take a look at it. I believe that if students had this opportunity, let's change planning. I believe that if students had this planning, they would be more motivated and alert in their afternoon classes and overall promotion would improve. Hmm. Well, I don't think planning fits here instead of opportunity because planning is not something that, that students have. It's not something you have. It's something that you do. It's something you think out. It's something you create, something you seek advice on, seek guidance on. You don't have planning. Someone doesn't give you planning. You make planning. You do planning. So I don't think it's A. Uh, we'll look at the answer in a minute. Change alert to consciousness, okay? Uh, alert to consciousness. I believe that if students had this opportunity, they would be more motivated and conscious in their afternoon classes and overall promotion would improve. Uh, this is actually a pretty good choice. Yeah, it's a pretty good choice, but let's see what the other ones are. Change promotion to performance. I believe that if students had this opportunity, they would be more motivated and alert in their afternoon classes and overall performance would, overall performance would improve. Yeah. Also, also a pretty good choice. I think that actually makes more sense than changing alert to conscious. Let's continue to read. Let's read the last one. Change improve to develop. Okay. I believe that if students had this opportunity, they would be more motivated and alert in their afternoon classes and overall promotion would develop. Um, I think promotion is not something that develops. Promotion is something that improves. Also, performance does not develop. Performance improves. To me, improve goes with promotion much better than develop goes with promotion. Okay, so now we had two of them, changing alert to conscious, changing promotion to performance, and we had two that seemed like good answers to me. Changing alert to consciousness or conscious, changing promotion to performance. Uh, I know that the answer for this one is C. Changing promotion to performance. Let's discuss why alert to conscious is not such a good choice, okay? First of all, because the word alert in this sentence works, works fine. I believe that if a student had this opportunity, they would be more motivated and alert. You can also read that sentence as you can also read that sentence as more motivated and more alert, just so you understand uh, the structure of the sentence, what it's saying, okay? Uh, and saying more motivated and uh, more conscious, that that works too, but remember always read the question. Leah has not used the best choice of words in sentence 18. You're looking for the word that's problematic or the phrase that's problematic. Here, alert is not problematic. It's fine the way that it is. And overall promotion would improve. Okay, now this, what do they mean when they say overall promotion? They're talking about, they're talking about students getting promoted from one grade to the next. Promotion would improve. Yeah, that's not bad, but it makes more sense to say performance. Performance would improve. Performance is something that improves. Promotion is something that increases. Overall promotion would increase. Overall performance would improve. So that's why the answer is C. Okay, I hope this helps. This was a really deep dive and a long video and a lot of work on your part to stick with it and to do the critical thinking about why one answer is better than the other answers. I recommend that you come back and listen to just one example at a time and also look at the test questions and answers on your own one at a time and really think 
do this process for yourself. Really think about why this answer makes more sense or why this answer is the best out of all the choices. Uh, good luck to you. And um, if you need one-on-one -on -one tutoring, my rates currently as of November 2022 start at $20 per hour per person. If there's three of you or more, the rate starts to go down from there. And if you want to contact me, you can reach out to me on Instagram. Currently, I'm at Kim Sue Tutor, and I'll put the link for that in the notes down below for the YouTubers. Thanks very much, and good luck.